Welcome to episode two of the Bolster Biology Podcast. In this episode, we will be talking about enzymes and how they help you. Enzymes are a very important part of the body and a function of proteins, in which we talked about in the previous podcast. Now, if you remember, in order to understand enzymes, we need to understand a little bit about energy. Energy is the ability to move or change matter. And in order for a chemical reaction to occur, there needs to be some sort of activation energy. The example we did in class was the piece of paper burning. And in order for this piece of paper to burn, I need to add energy. Because it's not just going to burn by itself. The energy that I add is a lighter. And as I light the piece of paper, it starts to burn. In this case, the lighter was the energy that was needed to start the reaction. These graphs show two types of reactions, the energy releasing reaction, such as a paper burning, and the energy storing action, such as photosynthesis in plants. From the previous example with the paper, you know that the paper would not spontaneously combust. It needed energy to start the reaction. That energy is called the activation energy. The beauty of enzymes, as we've seen in class, is that they reduce the activation energy. Without an enzyme, the burning of sugar, one of the most common reactions in your body, would be too violent to take place safely. However, enzymes make those reactions possible in your cells. By lowering the activation energy, the cells are then able to take advantage of all the energy given off by the reaction. Remember the enzyme reference in the book, carbonic anhydrase? That enzyme increased the reaction rate over one million times. Enzymes are extremely potent. Now, as we discussed in class, enzymes help with the chemical reaction by putting the two bonds where they should be. In a normal situation, these bonds can bounce off the place and everywhere, so the glucose molecules may never actually interact with each other to form the bond. However, with the enzyme, you remember the shape fits it perfectly so that the bond forms together, and now you have your disaccharide with the two glucoses. This figure demonstrates the lock and key model of enzymes. As you can see, the substrate fits perfectly into the enzyme. The place where the substrate and the enzyme meet is called the active site. The enzyme changes shape slightly to accept the substrate, and then the enzyme then facilitates the reaction. Once the products are made, the enzyme then releases the products and is free to catalyze, or help, more enzymatic reactions. The last thing that we need to discuss about enzymes are the thousands different types of enzyme that your body uses. We discussed several in class, such as pepsin, trypsin, carbonic anhydrase, catalase, and even amylase. Amylase is the first line of digestion that your body uses. It digests starch from the polymer into the single glucose molecules. If you stick a cracker in your mouth and let the salivary amylase take effect, so you just hold it there for a while, you will actually begin to taste the sweet of glucose as that starch begins to break down because of salivary amylase. Go ahead and try that as an experiment. There are thousands of different types. There are, there's, um, Proteases and cellulases and renin, lipases, lactases, papain, there's amylases. There's just so many different types of enzymes that keep your body running correctly. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the BBP on enzymes. I hope that it has expanded your knowledge a little bit more and that you understand how enzymes work and why enzymes are so necessary for your daily function. <laughs>